Let's get now to the follow up, maybe the wrap up of this Melania Trump plagiarized speech story. So on Monday evening, Melania Trump, Donald Trump's wife, spoke uh, and she had a paragraph, an extensive paragraph of her speech, which was essentially verbatim a copy of Michelle Obama's speech from 2008. Initially, everybody and their mother and father and daughter and cousin and friends all denied that there was anything plagiarized here. And all of a sudden, exactly as predicted, somebody fell on their sword. I don't know if this is actually the person responsible, but we have now heard that Meredith McIver, a family friend and writer for the Trump organization, identified herself. She put out a statement saying it was me. It was all my fault. I offered my resignation to Donald Trump and he turned it down, saying everybody makes mistakes. Um, the explanation is that she was supposedly on the phone with Melania Trump and Melania Trump told her about some of the stuff she likes about speeches and mentioned, I guess, a Michelle Obama speech. And then it was uh, Ms. McIver who decided to include verbatim, essentially, portions of that speech. Here is Donald Trump talking about this for the first time with George Stephanopoulos and, of course, redirecting. At this speech by Melania, we learned today that uh, someone who works with you all, Meredith McIver, offered her resignation. Why not accept it? Weren't you angry? She just made a mistake. And I thought it was terrific the way she came forward and just said, look, it was a mistake that I made. And she thought it was very unfair to Melania. Although, interestingly, the press treated Melania very well because they didn't think it was her. So you've had some amazing entrances. Yeah. So basically the guy known for firing people. I mean, basically Donald Trump's uh, reality show, his television career is based on firing people. Uh, now saying, hey, you know, she made a mistake. It's an embarrassing mistake. Melania went up there and, and just regurgitated a speech from eight years ago that the current first lady gave. Eh, it's just a mistake. Now, interestingly, Donald Trump has previously blamed Meredith McIver uh, in 2007 in a deposition. Donald Trump was grilled over whether he had overstated his debt. Uh, uh, and and uh, whether he had understated his debt, thus overstating his net worth. And he acknowledged that there was an exaggeration in one of his books, but he blamed this exact same woman. Take a look at the transcript here from the deposition and you'll see in the very bottom left. Uh, I'm sorry, bottom right of this page that we're showing you. He was asked why uh, uh, what what was actually going on with that. And he said, you know, he doesn't know that it could have been Meredith McIver because uh, she is the one who was writing a bunch of this stuff. So big picture, yet another disaster. This started on Monday, Tuesday, all denials, the news all day about Melania Trump's speech, Wednesday, wondering what would happen. And finally, a staffer falling on their sword. And now I guess we're sort of wrapping this up as we go into the last day of the convention. We knew someone was going to have to take the blame. Is Meredith McIver really responsible for this? Who knows? It doesn't even really matter. What's more interesting is that it may have actually been a violation of campaign finance laws for the Republican nominee to use a private corporate employee to write a campaign speech. Meredith McIver, to the best of the investigators knowledge, the journalists that have looked into this, she's a full time employee of the Trump organization, not paid by the campaign. And it is actually a criminal offense for a campaign to use private resources willingly and knowingly. Uh, will anything happen? Obviously not. Don't worry about it. Don't even give it another thought because who cares? It doesn't matter that Trump has been commingling charity donations with campaign events. It doesn't matter that this also may be a violation. It's Trump. He could shoot people on Fifth Avenue and uh, nothing bad would happen. I've talked about how people of all ages, but particularly millennials, are owning cars less and participating more in the sharing economy. And one of the more popular options is Zipcar, which gets you a car when you want it, when you need it. They offer all sorts of cars, SUVs, hybrids, whatever you need. It includes insurance and it includes gas. You just pay for the time that you actually use the car and you can reserve the car online from your smartphone over the phone. Then you unlock it with your zip card. Each car share member reduces their personal CO2 emissions by between 1100 and 1600 pounds per year. For our audience, Zipcar is offering $25 of free driving credit if you sign up at joinzipcar.com slash David. Support our show, reduce your carbon emissions and your spending on cars. 
sign up at joinzipcar.com slash David.